Hey, thank you so much for spending the time watching this video today. My name is Emilio and we are super excited to show you how to install Linux, specifically Ubuntu, onto your Synology NAS. Uh, you may not know that your Synology NAS can actually run virtualization technology and you can install VMs, set them up and, run, and have them running directly on your Synology NAS. You don't have to have a VMware ESXi or a Microsoft Hyper-V environment uh, separate to this. You can actually have your Synology NAS as the place where it's not only running the VMs, but storing the VMs and you can go and do whatever you want as if you're running an actual VM in an environment. So it's really, really cool. We're gonna be doing that today and showing you how to do it. Please do click on that button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos as well. Let's show you how to do this right now. All right, so we are logged in. Here we are, this is our Synology NAS. Now I am running a Synology NAS that is quite new and has some good resources built into it. Uh, now, of course, you're gonna to need to be very considerate of where you're gonna be installing your VMs um, because if you don't have enough resources, if you don't have enough CPU, enough RAM, if you don't have enough um, hard drive space, then you're gonna have some trouble uh, running this and running this well. Um, you may be doing this in the demo at home. You could be doing this in a corporate work environment. So just keep that in mind. The newer, the, the Synology, the more resources, the more enterprisey, I guess the more powerful your Synology is, the better because that lets you run more VMs. Um, and even if you're gonna run just one, it actually lets you allocate more resources to the VM. Because what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be using some of the resources that are built into your Synology NAS and sharing them with the virtual machine that we're gonna be building. So if your Synology NAS has um, you know eight gig of RAM inside of it, then you're gonna be borrowing a portion of that to allocate to the VM that we're gonna be building. Uh, so then your Synology NAS may run slightly slower because some of the resources have been allocated out to the virtual machine. So just keep that in mind very, very upfront. So here we are, we're logged in. Um, log in, you need to log in ideally as an admin, um, which is what we have done. We've logged in as an administrator. And the great thing about Synology is that you actually have some software that you can go and download from the package center to actually allow you to install virtual machines, any sort of virtual machine, which is brilliant across a whole bunch of operating system versions as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up package center first and foremost right here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is in here under search, I'm just gonna look for virtual and type in enter. And you see there the hit right here, virtual machine manager, okay? Now, do remember that um, you need to be running a relatively new version of the, um, the actual Synology software. If it doesn't show up, it could be because you're running an older version or because the app store is not up to date. Um, but if it does show up, great. And if it shows up, we click on install uh, and that will actually install the virtual machine manager software. So your NAS will need access out to the internet. Otherwise you can go and download the virtual machine manager software and do a manual install and then point it to that installer. Or you can do it directly from the internet, which is what I'm doing right here. Okay, so we'll let that do its thing. Uh, that is installing. And then once it's finished, of course that will now show up. Okay, so that's finished, it says open, but you can also click up here and then you'll see that virtual machine manager here is listed. So we can go ahead and open that up. And here we are presented with a wizard. Now this is the very first step and what we're gonna be doing here is selecting the volume to be used as storage for virtual machines and check if the host settings are suitable for running virtual machines. Essentially it's just two first steps that you need to do before we can even start talking about building uh, a virtual machine which is what you see right here. So we're gonna select next and uh, here's a few things. Um, there's a, a vSwitch, ARP, there's storage stuff, there's compute stuff that essentially is just a prerequisite that needs to be run on your NAS to make sure that it is eligible to allow it to run virtual machines. Now in my case, you'll see that these two first ones are already enabled and these next two are eligible. Now if you have some of these that are not eligible or they're disabled, uh, you need to go and get that working first, enable them. Uh, disable them if they, sorry, enable them if they are disabled and make them eligible if they're not eligible, if they're ineligible. Um, but sometimes if they are not good for you, um, you, may not be, you may not be able to run a VM on your uh, NAS, which is a real disappointment, 
um, because you're watching this video for that purpose. So you may be running an older version or one that is not compatible for this. But just because it's, um, it is ineligible, sometimes you can still get around it, but generally I'd recommend make sure that all of these look okay. Then the next step is now to select the volume. So of course you've got your NAS, your NAS is made up of all of your disks inside of your NAS that are made into volumes. Now you could have one volume where all your disks are compressed and made into one big pool, one big volume, or you could have multiple volumes on your NAS already configured. Uh, if you're the storage admin, if you're looking after this, uh, you probably already know how that's been set up, but you now need to select the volume where your virtual machines, uh, where your virtual machine is going to be living. Where is it physically going to sit? So in my case, I've just got the one volume and I've got more than enough uh, available space. Of course, you'll need to have available space to be able to do this. So if that's the volume that you want, great. We can now click on next uh, and that is really it. So it'll do a little bit of stuff in the background, um, get that uh, environment ready, at least the hard drive space, creating some virtual allocated space for this and then we should have a big tick. If yours does not have a tick, we may have, you may need to do some troubleshooting and try that again, finish. Now that is it, okay? So the first thing we've done is we've now got the host ready to go. Now traditionally, when we're talking about virtualization, uh, you've got VMware ESXi, you've got a server that's made into a host, you've got Hyper-V, which is Microsoft one, it's made into a host. Here, we've just made our Synology NAS into a host. So it's acting as a host or it's acting as a server you see that there are no virtual machines set up and the storage is the volume that we just created. And here is our volume with the space uh, around my volume. Uh, here is, this is my NAS, this is called Aguero Synology. And you'll see that it shows me some stats around how much percentage use right now, my CPU and my RAM and my LAN is currently using. So up and down, as well as um, the percentages of RAM and CPU. So you can already see that right now, I've got, um, it's not too busy. My CPU and my RAM is pretty good, so I could build some VMs and I should be okay. So now is the point where we go and actually get our Ubuntu server built. Um, under the virtual machines area, you'll see that I've already got a VM running. This is a CentOS VM, which is also Linux. Uh, and we need to go and create a new one. Now, of course, the first thing you need to do is you need to get yourself a copy of the Linux Ubuntu ISO file. Um, so you need to go out to the internet, search for Ubuntu ISO, the, the, essentially the Ubuntu website, and you can download the client version or the server version. We're gonna be installing the server version of Ubuntu. Um, and then once you've downloaded it, you can go into the image area right here and actually add the image. You can actually select it from your computer and upload it onto your NAS that way. But what I like to do is I like to have a location on my NAS anyway, where all of my ISOs are kept. So I generally go into the file station and uh, I'll upload it into here. I'll create my own folder and I'll upload it into here and then keep all my ISOs all together. So back in virtual machine, uh, we can now go and select create. And you can see a few options. You can build a Microsoft Windows um, server right in here. Uh, you can also do Linux, which is what we're gonna do right there and select next. Uh, the hard drive space, this is what we've already selected. We've already allocated this, and this is what we're gonna be using. Of course, making sure that there's enough capacity. Uh, we now give it a name. So what do you actually want the VM to be called? Okay, so we're gonna call this Ubuntu demo. Then you've got your CPU and memory that you need to allocate against it. Now these are going to be shared with CPU and memory that are on your Synology NAS. So your Synology NAS has CPU and memory. And if you allocate some of this to your VM, when the VM is running, you're gonna be using some of that capacity. So just be uh, aware of that, keep that in mind. Uh, you can go and change this later on. So if your VM is running too slow or you can actually sacrifice some of the resources, you can actually scale it back um, if you need to. So we're gonna leave uh, CPU as one, memory is just one gig. We can select next. Now here is the virtual disk, is what is the actual size of the the primary disk that is going to be used on your Ubuntu installation. You wanna go and add that now. I'd recommend going and adding the correct space right now. You can add more later on if you so choose to, but you will have to go and rescan storage on the actual Ubuntu installation. So if you wanna do this now, you can. I'm gonna select an 80 gig hard drive, which should give me plenty of space uh, for any future apps that I need to install as well. Uh, your default VM network, this is already by default the VM that we've configured under here, the actual network, uh, and it's gonna use the network that is built into your Synology NAS. And click on next. Now here we actually go and point our VM 
um, to the actual ISO file. So the Ubuntu ISO file that you have now downloaded, you've loaded it into your Synology NAS, and now we need to go and locate it and point to it. Now I've got all of my stuff uh, listed under an applications folder, and then I've got all my Linux, wherever it is, do, 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 under here, and I'm looking for Ubuntu, and this is the version that I've got right here. Uh, again, your version may be different depending on which version you've got, but we're just gonna select this one right here, uh, and that is the one that we're gonna be using. Of course, the desktop version is also available, uh, and it'll work exactly the same, uh, but this is more server-based, so we're gonna select that one. So if you're running an earlier version of Ubuntu, or even a newer version of Ubuntu, doesn't matter that it's not the version that I'm running, uh, the process is really going to be the same, okay? Uh, and then we leave the rest as the default. You don't have to change anything else there. As long as the ISO has been selected, we can now select next. Here is the, uh, the user that I want to administer this particular VM. Now this is not from Linux itself, but this is now from within the Synology now. So who is the admin of this um, VM itself, okay? So I'm gonna select admin. You can go and add additional groups and, and users later on. You can change all of this later on uh, as well. Here's a summary of what's going on, okay? And we're gonna select power on VM. So as soon as this is done, you can click on apply and then the VM will start up automatically and then we are good. All right, so it should now create that VM. There it is, creating. And then it should power on. And then this connect area will be available for us. So we can actually open up a tab, almost like you have a screen plugged into it. So you can see what is going on. It's so far, it's looking good. Now all of this looks good. If you're presented with this, you would have seen a little bit of a setup um, stuff. We, it's starting to load some of the necessary files and drivers, etc., to be able to load it. But if you're presented with a screen similar to this, it means that the ISO is valid and it's been booted and it's been mounted and the VM now recognizes it. Now, if you don't get to this screen, if you have an issue, it could be that the actual ISO file is corrupted. Maybe it's the wrong one that you've downloaded. So you'll have to go back and check that out again. Could be a setting on the VM itself. Maybe you didn't mount it correctly or point to it correctly. Go and double check that. But if you're here, great. We're gonna leave our language as English. Bit of information there, we can continue with that updating or you can do an update to a new installer. So you'll see that there is a uh, different version available, uh, which is fine. So I would always recommend running a new version if you can. Um, you can run an older version if you want to, but we're gonna just select update to new installer just because we wanna be running a new version. So it's gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna update it, download it, and then the installation will continue. Now it's asking us to configure at least one network interface. So you can set up your uh, DHCP, so it picks up an IP automatically. You can set up a static IP. You can change all of this later on once you're inside your Linux anyway. Uh, do you have proxy? Uh, if it's blank, you can leave that there as is. Mirror address, we can leave that as is. Do you wanna use the entire disk? Now remember, we allocated 80. You see that 80 is listed in there, uh, and that's good. Or you can actually go and create almost like a smaller version of that you know, hard drive um, specific for you. But we're gonna use the entire disk and uh, we're fine. So we can now select done right there. Here is a file system summary of what's gonna happen, what's gonna be created, essentially, done. Are you sure you want to continue? Because uh, all the data in here is gonna be erased as well. Uh, of course, you don't have any data because we just created a brand new disk, but if you're happy, we can say continue. Now here is we start configuring some details around Ubuntu, all right? Now I'm gonna give it my name and other relevant information. Okay, so that includes my server name that I wanna call it, my username and my password. It's all open SSH, sure. And here you can install some further things if you so want to, all right? Other things in your server environment. You can obviously go do a GUI later on if you want to because this particular version is gonna be command line only. Uh, if you are running the other Ubuntu, which is the desktop version, um, then that will be a GUI version where you have a nice interface. So the steps really are not gonna be too different between the two, just be aware of that, okay? And now that process will now begin. Okay, so installation is complete. Let's just go and say reboot now. If this has happened, it's because your disk is still mounted. So let's actually go into here. We're going to edit and we're gonna remove unmount, okay. 
So it's just trying to boot from it again. That's essentially what that's doing. There we go. And here we are. We now log in. Let's just move my video to the other side. Now I've logged in. So I've logged in there. It asked me for my login and my password that we set up during the installation. And here it is. This is now ready to go. It says Ubuntu systems are free software. There's absolutely no warranty, etc. And of course, this is being the Ubuntu server. It's completely CLI, which is command line. Um, if you're running the desktop version or even the server version, you can actually get the GUI version. So you actually have a proper um, graphical interface that you can work from. Um, but that is how we get um, Ubuntu running. And then really from there, you can just go and shut it down. Uh, you can do it from the command line itself, or you can also go into here and actually shut down right from there. That's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, clicking on that bell for all of my latest video releases. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.